Hello YouTube, in this video I'm going to be talking about the ending of Amazon's new series, The Man in the High Castle. This video will include some spoilers from the show, so if you have not finished or haven't seen the show, I would highly recommend leaving before we get into the details. Now if you have seen the show, there's a likelihood that the ending of season 1 has left you with some lingering questions about the series. Where exactly do the films come from? Is Hitler the man in the high castle? And what's going on in the final scene with Tagomi? In this video I'm going to address these questions and discuss other major plot points with supporting scenes from the show to help clarify some of the more intricate concepts. If you were caught off guard by the show's transition from what seemed like an alternate history series to more of a science fiction, this video will help you understand the ending a little more clearly, as well as speculate the direction Frank Spotnitz is going with this critically acclaimed series. So first we'll begin by examining one of the most important and insightful scenes of the show. The scene, which occurs near the end of the season finale, shows Colonel Wignar meeting Hitler in his castle. Was ist das? Was hätte sein können? Glaubst du an Schicksal, Rudolf? Ein kluger Mann hat mir einmal gesagt, das Schicksal ist fließend. Aber die Vorsehung wird von Männern bestimmt. Er hatte fast recht. Die Vorsehung liegt in den Händen nur weniger Männer. Similar to our first exposure to the films in the show, Hitler is watching a film from what is seemingly an alternate reality, where the Allies win the war. As we saw, he tells Colonel Wegnar that it is what might have been. So what does he mean by this? While the viewer is first led to believe that the films are propaganda, further exposure to the films throughout the show demonstrate that the films might actually be from other realities. The reason I say other realities is because the films don't just show the Allies winning the war. In episode 9 we see a film that depicts the Nazis bombing San Francisco and Frank being executed by Joe. And based on Hitler's collection of films that we see in episode 10, it is likely that the films come from multiple realities from the past, present, and future. But the real question that everyone wants an answer to is where do they come from? So this is where some knowledge of history and science comes in. Throughout the show, we know Colonel Wegnar is trying to give the Japanese science minister the plans to the Heisenberg device, which is understood to be the atomic bomb. While Heisenberg's presence in the show is non-existent this season, his legacy and what it might mean for the show might be more important than most viewers realize. Werner Heisenberg was a German physicist credited with the founding of quantum mechanics. Without getting into too much detail, quantum mechanics deals with the physics of subatomic particles. It's relevant to the show because one popular science theory that originated from Heisenberg's quantum physics is the many worlds interpretation. Similar to Heisenberg's Copenhagen interpretation, the MWI was a theory that parallel universes might exist alongside our own. These universes might have different histories, laws of physics, people, etc. In the show, there are clues that Heisenberg might have created a machine that could allow people to travel between these parallel universes, and that this is where the films are coming from. So where does Hitler play a role in this? In history, it has been well documented that Hitler was fascinated by science. It wouldn't be a stretch to believe that in the show, Heisenberg built the device to travel to alternate realities, and that Hitler used it to see his mistakes to learn from them. This is why he knows Colonel Wegnar had been sent by Heydrich to kill him, and he also knew that Rudolf couldn't do it. It also explains why even though the year is 1962, the Germans have advanced technology that wasn't created until years later. Hitler was likely peeking into these alternate realities and learning about their technologies as well. We see that they have developed a rocket-type commercial jet, what appears to be a maglev train in Berlin, and we even learn that the Germans dropped the A-bomb on Washington DC first in World War II. In fact, we are led to believe that the atomic bomb wasn't dropped on the US until at least 1945, which would imply that Hitler somehow sabotaged the US's development of the atomic bomb since in real life, the US had already begun testing their nukes in the early 1940s. 
Now that we understand that there is likely a device to travel to alternate realities, we might be able to make better sense of the final scene of the show. Apparently there is a way for people to view these alternate realities without the need of a machine. Tagomi was able to do this via meditation with Juliana's necklace on a park bench. Clearly his ability to do this will likely be explained in the next season, but there are some clues that may explain this now. The first is the necklace itself. It obviously has some meaning as there have been a few significant scenes in the show which have depicted Tagomi with the necklace often in a slow motion sequence. The necklace undoubtedly has more to it than meets the eye and might represent some sort of bond between the alternate universes. It might even represent some sort of shared destiny with Juliana as it seems highly coincidental that he found her necklace at the speech and then later met Juliana at the Nippon. Either way, the necklace has some significance and it should be a matter of time before we find out why. The second clue is subtle and lies deep in the show with Tagomi's assistant, Kodomichi. It appears that Kodomichi is likely from the alternate reality where the Allies win World War II. The clues were veiled in what appeared to be filler dialogue, but they are obvious as they are pointed out. First, we see a scene where Kodomichi has a deep burn on his wrist, which makes the audience question the origin of the burn. Then we learn that Kodomichi was from Nagasaki, which is one of the two cities where the U.S. dropped the atomic bomb during World War II in real life, which would clearly explain his burn. Finally, in a very serious scene at the end of episode 10, a distraught Kodomichi tells Tagomi that he is a good man, and perhaps too good for this world. He also tells him to not give up on meditating and continue to have faith. I'm nothing but a misguided fool, Kodomichi. No. You are a good man. Perhaps too good for this world. You must not lose faith, Trade Minister. You must not give up on meditation and not on searching. You must not... Kotomichi. What's the matter? If Kotomichi is indeed a reality traveler, it sets the stage for more travelers to make appearances in the show who may have important information from alternate realities. It could even explain the mysteriousness of Juliana's sighting of her sister Trudy in the market after she was dead. Two questions that will likely be answered in the show is what do these people know and how did they travel there? Kotomichi seems to know something about the fated Tagomi, which might be why he tells Juliana that her presence is dangerous and that she will unintentionally bring What's harm to him. This plot line and a couple other plot lines are worth noting. I won't bore you with all the details, but some interesting questions will likely be answered soon. One of the more intriguing plot lines is the dilemma that previous American turned into SS High Command Obergruppenführer John Smith will face as his son will likely be exterminated as his sickness progresses. What choices will John make to protect his family? Also, what is the significance of the plotline with Frank, the antique store owner, and the Japanese highborn man? Is the Japanese man a reality traveler as well? And lastly, who is the man in the high castle? It appears that Hitler is a prime candidate since he literally lives in a castle in the mountains, but a prior scene with Obergroup and Fuhrer John Smith speaking to Joe indicates that it is a group of men with a leader. Has he been misinformed, or does another person go by the name The Man in the High Castle? Or is it simply Hitler who is using the films as a method to lure resistance members to their death? Either way, I'm sure we will find out more as Season 2 has already been approved by Amazon Studios and will likely release in late 2016. Hopefully this video has answered some of your questions about Season 1, and make sure to like the video if it has given you some more insight into the show. Thank you for watching, and make sure to tell your friends about Amazon Studios' new series, The Man in the High Castle. Oh, this is going to be very hard for you to hear, Joe. But if you are taken to The Man in the High Castle, I want you to put a bullet in his head. even if it costs you your life.